you talk about it is actually about the uh, institutional innovation and the uh, Chinese development uh, from uh, the city, uh, one China city. Uh, this is a study uh, which we uh, we did when I was at the Reform Global Institute, uh, which now becomes the Asian Global Institute at Hong Kong University. Uh, and the study was actually uh, done uh, together with uh, NDRC, uh, the uh, 25 uh, researchers. Uh, from NDRC and there was another group of researchers from uh, our institute. So what we're trying to do is really trying to understand the, what's the uh, growth model behind the, the China success in the last few decades. And what we have identified is really the competition among the regions has been extremely important. Uh, but competition, uh, you know, the local government is like a landlord. They control the land, so they have incentive to improve the value of the land. When they're competing on FDI, on talents and the capital, basically they improve. But at the same time, they also create power like the pollution. Corruption, oversupply, uh, overcapacity, and also local government debt. So, what happened is that uh, the central government, by using you know the control on the personnel and also on the policy and the regulatory uh, you know institutions like the EOC, the CPRC, you know these regulators, they have this uh, cycle uh, of. Uh, decentralization and improving competition, then there are a lot of problems. Uh, uh, and then the central government needs to really uh, improve the policies so to control the bad consequences of excessive and uh, uh, bad competition. So that, that's the process we are trying to sort out, uh, but from a uh, uh, city's uh, perspective. I will try to skip a lot of this series, you know, like this one is basically the, the point we make is that uh, uh, the state and the market are like the, the full size of the same coin. You know, with, 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 uh, you know, in, in the West, you know, we usually discuss about the, the state and the market as like a rival. But in fact, our experience is that the, the, it is not. The quality of state, the market depends, depends on the quality of the state-related institutions, which we call copyright infrastructure. The, the public institutions need to define copyright, needs to help create exchange platforms, and then also needs to have a mechanism to resolve that conflicts. Uh, that's usually called the overall the judicial systems to resolve uh, the disputes. Uh, uh, so, so what happened is that when uh, a city like Foshan used to be a village, uh, very little industry, and then they become one of the global production bases. Uh, they, what happened in the process is, is basically the government actually evolved into uh, an agent, the local government, you know, trying to improve the culture rights infrastructure. Basically, reduce transaction cost, and then there are a lot of market uh, institutions uh, involving. You know, I will go back to. I will skip some of the uh, series. You know, but if you look at the reality, uh, uh, we actually got four surprises. Uh, four surprises on this study. One surprise is that. The, uh, you know, we were really surprised by the performance of the city. Uh, uh, I will talk about this later. Uh, uh, and if you look at this graph, you know, the, the one, the, the, low, uh, the red line, you know, is China average. 
GDP per capita growth. In four shine is the upper dotted bar. Uh, in four shine basically is already become high income economy. Uh, its per capita GDP is higher than Beijing, Shanghai. Uh, and that was a surprise, you know. Uh, so I, I will go through a few charts so you can understand uh, why the four shine is interesting. Uh, if we try to identify the cities in China which are already above the World Bank threshold of high income, uh, is the uh, 15,660. Uh, and there are 16 cities in Bangladesh the China. They are already above that threshold. Uh, we live in a few smaller cities. So all the cities here have GDP above 100 million US dollars. Uh, uh, so so this, these are the major cities which have already entered high income. And if you look at the, the ranking by population, then we see familiar names Shanghai, Beijing, Tianjin, Guangzhou, Shenzhen, Wuhan, Qingdao, Hangzhou, Nanjing, Yingbo, then Foshan. How many of you know about Foshan? You see? Only a few. <laughs> so, so this is the surprise. Yeah. But this is by population. Uh, the population of Fortan is about 7.3 million. It's so probably the same as Hong Kong. And then if we rank the 16 cities by GDP per capita, four size rankings increased from, uh, from, what, from uh, I think, from 11 to 9. Uh, and then by ranking as 9, four size per capita GDP, which is a manager of proxy for per capita, is higher than Changsha, Nanjing, Beijing, Shanghai, Qingdao, Shenyang, Wuhan. So, uh, but then other information, you know, which independently uh, help to show the performance of all China. So McKinsey did a study trying to predict in the next 20 years which is the most dynamic city. They projected the, the, the increase in GDP. Four China was regulated. 13 out of 79. Out of 79 most dynamic cities, China is 39. Uh, out of 79, China is 39. The four time rank is 30 in the world. Uh, uh, so I will skip a lot of other data because basically per capita GDP is uh, aggregate which shows a lot of correlation and uh, performance of the uh, uh, But one thing I want to highlight is that the four time is really in the city. If you look, uh, basically, for China as a whole, the component of industry and GDP declined uh, for China from like 48% to 45% uh, by 2012. But for four China, it increased 11% uh, So this shows that the, how strong you know, four times industry is. Uh, for China, actually, if you look at this chart, uh, uh, you know, it, it, it's almost as as strong as Guangzhou. Uh, uh, yeah, a little bit weak than Shenzhen. Uh, uh, but what is most striking uh, is uh, let me show you the uh, the other indicator. Is this fixed capital, fixed asset investment divided by GDP? For four China, it's like uh, about. Uh, one third, uh, uh, 32 percent, and the, for China as a whole, it's almost 70 percent. Uh, the fixed capital investment is a proxy on big projects sponsored by the government. Uh, so it's not a net investment, it's a gross investment. But it's a very good indicator about the, you know, the, you know, the, the, the investment, because a lot of people worry about the, uh, too much investment uh, at the local level. But in for China, this is actually not the case. Uh, uh, and this is not for one year, it's actually over the last decade. Uh, uh, now, I, I want to show you another very interesting data, which is the, the loan GDP ratio. The loan GDP ratio represents the access to capital you know, by a city. 
by the economy. Uh, and the, the, the debt, uh, the, the extent of leverage. Uh, and for this, uh, China as a whole, this is only backlog. I explained to you what other debt uh, on backlog. Backlog is the major source of financing for Chinese uh, economy. Uh, China as a whole is 121%. Poor China is about 85%. And of course, you look at the Shanghai, you know, Beijing, it's almost 100%. And what it says is that the Koshan's access to finance is actually the only national average. And the Koshan is one of the most productive cities in China. So this basically is an indication that the, the, the degree of financial depression in China is actually quite serious. The more productive cities cannot get credit, but credit was occupied by a lot of less than low cities. And that is a serious problem in China. Uh, and the other surprise that we got is that this, when we tried to find something unique about the you know, we were surprised that there's not much things which are unique. Uh, it's a private like economy. It's a uh, they focus on uh, the, the domestic market uh, and the highly specialized the, the supply chains. You know. uh, so I, I, will, I will just show you a little time. I, I think I will just show you the uh, okay. The uh, one feature is that the population in Forsyth, half of them are from outside. Uh, actually, uh, you know, the, the, the migrant population, migrant workers. Uh, and so it attracts uh, the The other data is interesting is that the, 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 the people worried about the property bubble in China, right? But if we look at the, the proper indicator, you know, which we show here, is the cost of 100 square housing, you know, the, the, the residential flats. Uh, divided by the, the income you know, which we use to capture the DPS cost. You will find out that the, the four side people, you know, they needed to spend nine years of their protection DP to buy a 100 square meter flat. And this number for China as a whole is 14 years. So you can see that if you use the income as a benchmark, four side housing is actually very cheap. Uh, so, so all these indicators uh, shows that uh, uh, you know the, there are problems of financial repression in China. Uh, but I will, I will uh, uh, let's come back to, to I will show you just one chart here. That, that, uh, in four time, they are more than thirty clusters of supply chains specialized in, in different industries. Uh, uh, and, and this, uh, uh, I don't have time to talk about this, evolved from the historical like land reform, the local controls of the land, the use of the land as a, as a uh, resource uh, to develop industry. And because land is distributed evenly across villages, so each village is actually independent of different but complementary industrial classes. Uh, this you know, made the whole region becomes a very powerful industrial basis. Uh, uh, the, the third surprise we got is that uh, basically uh, the secret of Forsyth's growth is, is basically no, no choice, it's have to compete. Forsyth's not a capital city, it's not special land zone, you know, there's not much resources. Uh, the only thing they have is very close to Hong Kong and very close to Hong Kong. So geographically is a very good uh, uh, location uh, for development. Uh, uh, so, for China, the local government developed a huge amount of infrastructures. Although, you know, they have low debt ratio, you know, uh, and they developed, uh, for example, give the example of the idea. For China independently developed its first ring highway. The number one first ring in For <coughs> is the same length as fifth ring in. Beijing. Foshan is also the first city in China 
use toll bridge, they use the toll fees finance the building of the first meter, they're one of the major bridges. Yeah. So there are a lot of things happening in Foshan, for example, the, the latest, uh, I don't have time, but the, you, if you, you can see, this is Foshan after 2008, developed two new cities. This is one city, the, the picture is too small, but this city have a central park. The, same, the size of Central Park is exactly almost like the, the Central Park in New York City. And you go there, it's like Singapore. Uh, beautifully viewed. And the infrastructure is you know, in the city where several uh, subway and uh, light rail cross was entirely developed by private sector, free to the public, uh, using the Hong Kong you know, basic model, uh, the HPV model. Uh, okay. And then they also developed uh, uh, and this is another city. This, this is the so-called financial service hub, uh, which is now HSBC, AIA, their back office is okay. Uh, and the, the, the other city, this one is called the Sino German uh, Industrial Park. Uh, they try to introduce the German practice, especially in helping you know, the private, uh, small, medium-sized companies. Uh, so as you can see, that, that I'm running out of time, so uh, basically uh, the, the, the last surprise is that uh, uh, most problems we see in Foresight, it turns out to be the same problem as China is facing. Pollution, local debt, also is less serious in Foresight, uh, and also the, you know, the, the difficulties of upgrading the industry to uh, high value added uh, and more innovative uh, industry. So, uh, because of time, I will just uh, uh, you know stop here. So, uh, you know, we will uh, take our time. Thank you very much.